What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. We are working on the International today, so that's exciting. And we'll be getting the transmission installed, so let's see how it goes. So we got our new input shaft installed and ready to go. Um, the reason we had to get a new shaft was because the pilot bearing hole on our old shaft was too small. Yeah, it was too small. The pilot bearing was too small for the old shaft. And Eaton makes two shafts for this transmission. The only difference is the size of the end that goes into the pilot bearing. This is a 25 millimeter. The other shaft had a 30 millimeter. And we we originally thought we could just buy a different pilot bearing that could work with that 30 mil millimeter shaft, but we found after a lot of shops, different bearing shops and researching that that is not the case. They do not make that size of bearing for our flywheel. So we just had to buy an input shaft. That was like $175, not too bad. And I think that solved all of our problems. So the transmission is officially ready to go in. This will be interesting because we have no way to get the transmission underneath the truck. So we are going to remove the cab and move the cab back to here and then we'll have room to work on the transmission. Just because for those of you who haven't worked on these, the flywheel and the clutch alone together are over 100 pounds. So it's a pain to work with, but we figured either remove the engine so we can install the transmission to it or remove the cab to give us more room. So we're gonna go for that method and see how it goes. We tried to lift it as you guys saw and we severely underestimated the weight of the front of this because when we pulled the other cab off our truck we did lift it by hand but we didn't have the doors in it, the seat in it, the dash in it or any or glass or anything so it was a lot lighter. That is scary. Yeah. So when we lifted this one we were like oh this isn't going anywhere. So yeah like you guys saw we got the jack and the lift on that side. Lifted it up and then rolled the truck forward. So, and then that gave us plenty of room to do transmission stuff. So, let's, I uh, think we're gonna pressure wash the transmission real fast just to clean it up. Just cause I hate working with dirty stuff. I'm a mechanic and hate getting my hands dirty, I admit it. <laughs>
All right, so we got the flywheel on. Um, just things to remember. There is an offset holes on the crank and the flywheel that you have to line up. So make sure that those match up. There's just two that are narrowed together. So just measure before you put them on. Ours were those two. Um, and then the torque spec is between 61 and 69 pounds. So we just did 65. Figured to split it and call it good. So easy parts done. Now we're gonna try and do the clutch. See how that goes. Got the clutch installed. Wasn't as bad as last time. I think we learned a few things last time. But the um, only pointers I have is just kind of get it all on there and then align, put some bolts into the holes just so they align. Don't try to attach them to the flywheel. Once you get them all in there, then you can kind of lift everything. Use some pry bars to lift up until you get one started and then you can slowly get, in, get them threaded in from there. And then tighten them in a star pattern and the torque spec is 35 foot-pounds. So this should come out. She's toy, toy like a toyga. Yeah, hopefully we can get that out. <laughs> Should come out. But, uh, yeah, next we will be spraying off the transmission. Oh, Ryan got it. <laughs> then I think when you install it, you want it down like that. And then the clutch fork. I don't know what you call it on this. These clutch forks will go down around it. And then this hooks to your clutch pedal so when you press it, it turns it and pulls it. And this is a pull style clutch. So, all right, let's see if we can get this bad boy in. Someone can't hang. Home oh, buddy. Home oh, buddy. Well, we finally got it. It's not bolted, but it's mated. And that was a pain. We pulled it off a few times to make sure the splines were aligned because it just wouldn't go in those last like four inches. And finally we just, I don't know what it was. I think it was just the angles were slightly off. And so, yeah. So I don't really have any pointers. Just 
get your angles right and hopefully you have something to lift it with. Or in the past we used that jack and that worked really well but we weren't able to do that but sweet let's throw some bolts in it and i think we're good all right so we got the transmission mounted and uh it wasn't an easy chore but we got it done uh so it's actually kind of cool uh i've never seen i've looked them up but i've never seen anyone do this combination before so we've got the dt360 uh, matched with the FSO 6406A transmission. Uh, all those fancy numbers basically mean that it's an Eaton Fuller uh, six speed with an overdrive. Um, so that overdrive gear is going to give us that highway speed that we want because really we're not going to be doing a ton of pulling with this thing. This is going to be mainly probably just around town and highway driving. Uh, so it kind of gives us that option with this transmission. But uh, we got the clutch in, got the transmission on. It was a little tricky getting it in there, but we just had just that wrong angle just slightly off and we fixed that and it went on smooth and uh, got it all tightened up. So yeah, we got a, we got a transmission. Oh yeah. Now there's a, another big step that makes it exciting. All we have left of the drivetrain is the drive shaft. So now that we have the transmission in, we can measure from the transmission to the back yoke and then we could order a drive line so yeah it's pretty exciting and really to get it driving all we would have to do is hook up that drive line figure out the clutch brake and throttle, throttle and we could technically drive this yeah wouldn't be able to steer it but Oh, we don't need to steer. I guess we can hook that up, which we have everything. We have that power steering from that other truck. And from the looks of it, it looks like it should just bolt right on. Should be the same steering column. So really everything should slide together steering wise. So, and then we'll just run our lines over from the pump on the DT360. Him. Another thing with this transmission, I know that probably some of you are going to have some questions that are either doing a build like this or uh, doing some type of DT swap. Uh, that FS6406, so that 640 stands for the torque rating it has, so it has a 640 foot pound torque rating. Um, now, people will be concerned with that because they're like, hey, if you're going to pump up this uh, engine, you're going to want something uh, more heavy duty than that. We're not really looking to pump this engine up. I mean, maybe down the road just a little bit, but we're not really turning this into a hot rod truck. Um, and I know a lot of guys even do the ZF5 or ZF6 uh, manual swap in this, and that has an even lower torque rating. It's pretty close, but an even lower torque rating. Um, and so uh, this is gonna work great for what we need, and we're not gonna be bump bumping this thing up really any higher than a couple hundred horsepower. And uh, so it'll be it'll work perfect for us. It'll be right in that torque rating we need. So we're pretty excited about it. This was a good find. So yeah, I guess bullet points for the end of this video. All you need to hook up an FSO transmission to a DT360. You can use the same flywheel, same pilot bearing. As long as it has the same bell housing, which it should, seems like that's pretty standard. There's only two options. Um, and then this only this transmission only comes with two input shafts. So as long as you have the input shaft to match up to your pilot bearing, it'll slide right together. And you'll have a six-speed transmission with an overdrive for your DT360. And it's a 14-inch clutch, not 13-inch. Like when we yeah. bought this, we saw that. This number put us through a lot of headache because when we bought this from the, the yard, it had 13 inches written on it. So we assumed that that meant that it needed a 13 inch clutch. And we did so much research and all it took was a... I took one, I called, I just called Eaton Fuller, their hotline and guy answered and I was like, hey, here's the transmission I have. What size clutch? He said 14. And obviously yep. it's working. So. Solved all of our problems. So yeah. 14 inch clutch, 14 inch dual, dual disc pole style clutch. 
So yeah, I think that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't yet, subscribed. That way you can see when the next videos come out. And thank you to all the new subscribers. They're slowly coming in. And if you like this build, want to see it keep going, give it a thumbs up. That helps us out a lot. And we'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.